All right, let's build our turbine. So starting with the motor in mind, because well, that's the important part. I do now have a couple of different motors. If you just saw my most recent one, there's the hub motor off an e-bike, which is a three phase. This smaller permanent magnet 12 volt 120 watt motor, which I have not used at all, but it's very similar, which is a smaller version of this. I think this is the 250 watt. This one doesn't say, but I believe this is a 250 watt permanent magnet motor. It's a generator motor. So this is the one we use in all of our other videos, the tow turbine, Pelton turbine. So it's very common in the other ones. So I figured it's a good starting point. So for this, I designed a little bracket that screws onto the pipe here. And then actually this motor will screw and bolt on like so. So the motor will sit just like this. So now we have our shaft vertical, which will be vertical with the shaft coming out of uh, the tube. So now that we have that figured out, this is our intake. We can tuck this off to the side because it's not really important. This will be exactly like it is right now, just a little farther in, unless we cut it a bit. And the reason we would do that is because cutting that length of tube would change the difference between the intake and the outlet of the pipe, thus increasing the flow potential. I mean, we're not gonna be maxing out, we're not gonna be hitting its terminal velocity inside this pipe. I think we only right now have a two or three foot drop, which we might extend in the future. But now that we have that figured out, we have the motor situated. We can set this to the side as well. We can set it all the way out to the ground. Now, if you can imagine where we have, we just had that, that tube, the motor that's sitting right here, and then our intake coming down over here. On this side, we will have our turbine or impeller wheel, as I'm gonna call it. And I believe this is just an ABS printed one. It's very rough. That screw, I'm probably gonna find a shorter one, a shorter one before we install and drop all of our parts. So that then it comes up to this little cap that I designed here. It has a bearing on the inside, which is why it has this weird, weird star-shaped pattern. There's also a bearing that sits up top. And then because I want, because this gets a bit more complicated pretty soon, you'll understand why I have all of these pulleys on here right now. And it's so we can test all the different ratios without having to take this whole thing apart. So this will drop into here like so. And it is designed to have an o-ring i'm having an issue getting an o-ring on there so i might have to print a new cap or design something separate but once this drops in you now have the, this that goes into the pipe which is right here this is now what we're going to call our outlet or the exit so you have that that sits in here and this will branch off to this small section of tubing and is how we will start our vacuum. That will actually be used by a little Ryobi 18, I think they're 18 volt, 18 volt battery. And then we'll have a shut off probably down here at the bottom or at the top. Well, I actually bought two so we can do one of both because I don't want there to be a whole column of air where it could be sucking in and potentially ruining the vacuum. So I'm probably gonna have one at the bottom and I might do one at the top as well just for convenience, so. We'll see how that goes. But now that we've showed the outlet, let me show you how this gets more complicated very quickly. So we have this turbine in here, right? Let's set this over here. And I had a little bit of deflection. And that was like obvious because once you start pulling way up here with a belt and tensioning, the bottom of this wants to move around, which makes sense. And I designed this cap hoping that this would hold it in place enough that this wouldn't be an issue. And this wasn't an issue necessarily with water running through it, but in small testing, so I imagine it would be, it, it will be an issue when we're filming. So to combat this issue, I decided to come up with this ingenious idea. Ingenious idea. Because if this cap, which we'll actually take it out here, so I can kind of show you. My idea was if I can hold the cap down, to this little ledge right here, this little ring, problem solved. It would have to be, it would have to hold it straight because there's no tolerance in this 
in this cap at all. Well, I was wrong. So I printed this elaborate little clamp. You can ignore the top, just ignore this top part right now. This elaborate clamp, and it did work. And it did straighten the cap out. But you wanna guess what it didn't straighten out? The thing I was trying to solve. And this is what's important with engineering, is defining the problem and solving the problem. So I straightened the cap out, but the cap wasn't the issue. It was straightening the rod out, which has the, inter the impeller on it. So that's actually what the problem was. So the first solution actually allowed me to work on a solution for the real problem. And you can see with that missing screw, this little tower went, is now sits on there as well. So what actually happens, and this gets a lot more clever the farther you go up, or a lot more of a waste of time, depending how you look at it. So this would sit on there like so. You have this nice clamp that comes over. Actually, I thought it was rather smart, just didn't work at all. So it holds down the cap, that works. Now, this tower extends up, and I have, I had this little piece right here with a fourth bearing in it. This bearing holder then sits on top of here, and I have, where that screw just fell out of, four screws to adjust so I can pull back and forth and adjust the tension and push on the rod. This now strains out the rod enough. It clears all of our different pulleys on there. So now we can test everything, and we should actually be able to adjust this based on the tension because you need enough tension on the motor, but too much tension, and this grinds on the inside of the tubing. So let's get this thing glued together and go over and do some testing. I hope you and Randy enjoyed the show.